Hello everyone, this is Nate Ferguson, and this is Yeast Basics 2. So this is your course introduction for Yeast Basics 2. Welcome! And some of you may be asking yourself, why is this happening? What is Yeast Basics 2? Why are you making a Yeast Basics 2? This is what we're going to talk about. So, to give you a bit of background for this, every single day of the week, we here at Escarpment Labs are talking to our clients. We're figuring out how we can best serve them, what products we provide them, and more importantly, especially for me, how can I help them fix their problems? What problems are they having? How can, how can we best assist them and to make higher quality beer? With, through this, we know their problems very well. And we have then realized from chatting with many of you that many of you are suffering, if not exactly the same, very similar problems. These are common yeast application problems within the brewery. So the goal of this series is to address those. The goal here is to educate and advise you on the application of yeast in the brewery to avoid these common problems. Now, as always, as we go through all these, these different elements, if it's not going to make you a better brewer, if it's not going to improve the quality of your beer, we're not going to cover it. Sim we're going to keep things simple as possible, no more complicated than it needs to be. Now you may be asking yourself, what's different about Yeast Basics 1? Nate, I already went through your first lecture series and I saw this. Well, Yeast Basics 1 was mainly focused on general knowledge of yeast and how you can better understand yeast and how it functions. You know, understand how ATP and why the yeast cells consume sugars and things like that. You, would, you can almost think of Yeast Basics 2 as the application or how you use these, these elements from Yeast Basics 1. It's going to be focused on using yeast within the brewery with an emphasis on how to avoid common problems that we see or where, the, or where to identify these common problems that occur. Now we've broken this series down into four modules and each one of these modules will, will compose of two individual lectures. The four topics we're going to be covering are for module 1, yeast and, ox and oxygen, so war aeration. Module 2, Monitoring Fermentation and Harvesting Yeast. Module 3, Pitching Yeast and Understanding Pitch Rate. And then Module 4, some small topics and a wrap-up. Although it's not required, I highly recommend and strongly encourage you to watch Yeast Basics 1 before tackling this new content. Now a bit more in-depth, I said each module will be broken down into two different lectures. Lecture 1 for Module 1 is going to be how oxygen works, why it's important for the yeast cell, and then we're going to follow up with the application, how to properly aerate your wort, go into mechanics, go into centered stones, carbonation stones, different mechanisms for injecting wort in, sorry, air into our wort so we see an increase in DO and therefore happier and healthier fermentations. We're then going to get into module two for monitoring fermentation. What should I be looking for during a fermentation? Just because the gravity is going down, is there anything else other than density or gravity I should be looking for? We're then going to go and flip this into harvesting yeast, best practices, principles, things we have found internally that work well and things we found that don't work great. Now after these two modules, we're going to have a Q&A with Richard and I to answer your questions based on these first two modules. We'll then go to module three, which will be pitching yeast and understanding pitch rates. We'll talk about why, what is pitch rate and why it's important, why it matters, and how it changes from facility to facility based on all the different variables you throw at it. We're then going to talk about yeast storage and pitching, how to physically actually eject yeast cells out of different brink designs and things like that, and what the impact of yeast storage is. We're then going to do a final wrap of the last two lectures, which are some small topics. The first one's going to be based on vitamins and nutrients needed for the yeast and what impact they have on fermentation. And then we're going to do our final lecture will be a bit of a wrap up and some other small topics that we bring in. To wrap the whole course, we're then going to have a Q&A with Richard and I again to, to, to go over the entire, uh, the entire course, all eight lectures. Now on top of this, we are going to go through a different delivery method than we did for Yeast Basics 1. Yeast Basics 1 we recorded live. And that was great. It worked well. But we think we can do it better. Now for this live version, we presented the lecture and then we, we answered questions immediately after. We're changing this up. This time, we are going to record the lecture and then post them all to YouTube. Hopefully, we're going to keep them a bit shorter as well. There will be eight lectures in total posted over four weeks, so roughly two lectures each week, plus some Q&As thrown in there. Each lecture, we, we will be looking at the comment section for those, so please go to YouTube and use that comment section to, to ask questions. And with that, we're just going to do a quick little refresher as to why, why, we, why this is all important. Now, yeast or Saccharomyces cerevisiae could be Saccharomyces carlsbergensis or pastorianus if you're working with some lager yeast or even some weirder stuff like Retenomyces or Saccharomyces, not Saccharomyces, sorry, not cerevisiae. Yeast is always your number one employee, always. There's no, 
There's no way around that. It's always your number one employee. It's by far the most crucial component of, of any, fermentation, any fermented alcoholic beverage, even non-alcoholic beverages. Without yeast, there's no alcohol. There's an arguably then no point. There's no reason for survival. It doesn't taste as good. And yeast is complex. So we're going to go over how it works and how to apply those, that, 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 that knowledge inside the brewery. Now, I always try to frame yeast a bit differently than how I see other people do it. Most people treat yeast just like an ingredient. I've said this to many, many of you, I have many clients and things like that, that I've seen brewers pour over hot bills and you know, malt bills and things like that, and then just throw yeast at it and say, I hope it works. It's not great. I would, I would encourage you to think of your yeast more so like a pet. The healthier you can make it, the better it's going to be. If it's stressed out, it's not going well, it's not going to create bread or, a good beer for you. It's more important for you to think, of, think about your yeast as a companion, as something that you work with. I like the pet analogy a lot. You need to care for it. You need to take care of it, and it'll take care of you. Think like a yeast. You know, we're going we're gonna to jump a bit more into detail like we did with Yeast Basics 1 and the conversations about how yeast cells make themselves happy, how make themselves healthy, and what we can do and how what we do is going to impact their health. I want you to get into the mindset of a yeast cell. It might be a bit nerdy, I know. Think of like, honey, I shrunk the kids, but go a few more scales down, even smaller, to single cells. If you can do this, it's going to help you understand what you do and how what you do influences the yeast cells. Now, this can be difficult. I'm not going to argue that this can be difficult. One of the main goals of Yeast Basics 1 and this series is to help you better understand what makes a yeast cell tick. Uh, if I were to make one big differential between Yeast Basics 1 and 2 is that Yeast Basics 2, we're hoping to give you the example and give you the knowledge so that you can better identify when the yeast cells are unhappy, when the yeast cells are, are, are poor health or, unha or unhealthy. Uh, there's a lot of small little signs that everyone can, that if you understand what's going on, you can see and understand or predict or observe what is going on and be able to solve it on your own. Now remember, for all this content, if it's not going to make you a better brewer, we're not going to talk about it. There's a lot, we can get really into the weeds with all this content. We can go get really nitty gritty. That's not the goal. If it's not going to make you a better brewer, we're not going to dive into it. That's what the Q&A is for if you want to go further into it. It's as simple as this though. You know, if you just add, it's the golden rule. Treat, on to other, treat others at, uh, and the planet as you would like to be treated. Do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. Just include yeast. If you make them happy, they'll be happy too. Uh, a little bit of a running joke that also happened before. You can almost think of this series as the second edition of How to Win Friends and Influence Yeast. Uh, always a bestseller. And with that, that's your course introduction. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited. Uh, we're going to start recording all the, all the new lectures coming out the next couple weeks. And if you want, want to learn more, come along as we go through Yeast Basics 2. Look forward to seeing you. Cheers.